Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, February 20th, 2018. This is episode 30. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah... Maybe a little lulls. And in this episode, actually, we have two lulls moments for you, not just one. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show. And boy, did you miss a good one today. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. The image of the profile matches the image on this show. And if you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to the comments after the YouTube part of the show is over. So please yeah, don't be, 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 be commenting during the show, even if I'm not going to address them during the show. I will afterwards. And if you're watching on YouTube, you need to join me on Facebook so you don't miss the full show. So today's show is titled... It's not a trade war. It's an intimate trade disagreement. And if you were watching the Facebook version of the show, you would know the inspiration behind that. It's not just descriptive of the top story. There's a story behind that as well. You can get show notes at isheadlines.com or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to iState.tv slash H030, that is. You can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And remember the audio version? That is, that's just the 20-minute timer part of the show, from the start of the timer to the end of the timer. That's all you get on the odd audio podcast of the version of the show. On today's episode of headlines that you may have missed. The trouble with steel and the EU, Turk Reich's bellicosity, gold fights tumor, Afrin siege, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. EU threatens trade war if U.S. carries through with steel tariff threats. So the EU, through one of their economy minister, spokesperson, people, thingy, third, whatever they are. Can you say spokespersons? Is that still correct? Are we doing person is firing back at the Trump administration after the U.S. hinted at further tariffs targeting steel and aluminum imports. Remember, though, it's, it's not a trade war. It's an intimate trade disagreement. The EU is threatening countermeasures against the U.S. if it goes through with its threats. This is from Reuters here. The European Union will respond, quote, appropriately, unquote, if the U.S. President Donald Trump's administration decides to impose tariffs on European steel imports, the German economy minister said on Tuesday, we must first wait and see whether and what action the U.S. President will take. An economy minister spokeswoman. Oh, now it's spokeswoman. Oh, I see. Also, if it's a man, it's a spokesperson. But if it's a woman, it's a spokeswoman. You know what? Smash the matriarch. Oh, no, never mind. If U.S. restrictions on our European steel companies actually materialize, the EU will respond appropriately, she said, adding, you know, she said, you just assumed her gender? A person's gender? Personhood's gender? Can you say personhood? I, I'm not allowed to say manhood. i got to say personhood. I know that. I learned that from Trudeau. And I'm, I'm practicing that. Uh, it's like uh, the, the city of Manchester has been renamed Personchester. Wow, Personchester. <laughs> that just sounds creepy. I don't know. I don't know if I want to associate with, associate with Personchester. Chester, by the way, is the name of my guinea pig. 
and I and I think that's uh, very relevant. Now that that was our top story, and we'll see. Is the trade war coming? I'm I'm all signs point to yes. Turkish political candidates threaten to invade Greece if elected. Everybody who's been following this show, to, uh, if, if, even if you just catch a couple episodes here and there, you're probably caught enough to learn how much I love the Turk Reich. And I, every once in a while, I, I like to add this little caveat. This is nothing personal against Turks, individuals who may be of uh, Turkish ethnicity. I, I assess individuals as individuals, not as part of their collective. However, something's going on over there in the Turk Reich, and this kind of indicates that there's a lot of people in Turkey, like an overwhelming majority of people in Turkey, that are buying into this Turk Reich garbajo. It seems that Erdogan, well, he doesn't go far enough for the bellicose people of the Turk Reich. Two major political candidates vying for votes in next year's elections are promising to go to war with Greece in an effort to claim islands in the South Aegean that don't belong to the Turks. The islands are now an attractive target for the Turks because there's oil and gas in them their seas surrounding these islands. It's uh, Somebody should cue the Beverly Hillbillies theme right about there. The story is from Express UK. Their headline, World War III. Turkish politician promises to invade Greece if victorious in the election. Turkey's leader of the Republican People's Party, CHP. Hey, that's California Highway Patrol. Wow, they've expanded their jurisdiction. That's weird. Has threatened to invade 18 Greek islands in the Aegean Sea if he comes to power. That could trigger World War III as President Erdogan continues his aggressive rhetoric after imposing his forces in Syria. It has emerged. I, I didn't write that paragraph. I could barely make sense of that paragraph. Uh, Cliff Notes version. This guy, Kamal Kuladroglu. Kula Kuladroglu. Kula yeah. He's, he's going to go to war if he gets elected. He said he would invade and take over 18 Greek islands in the Aegean Sea, just as former Turkish Prime Minister Bulent Echevet invaded Cyprus in 1974. Now, he's not alone, because in addition to that, there is uh, the head of the newly formed, quote, good party, unquote. That's not an Orwellian name for a party, a political party at all. Because a political party named Good is kind of an oxymoron, but I digress. So this is uh, Merle Oksena, who will also make a bid to run uh, to run Turkey and hinted that they could wage war against Greece. She remarked that what is required must be done for the good of the children, of course, for the good of the children. Gold nano factories can enter cancer tumors to deliver meds. See, here's some good news. Here's some good news right now, right here. Molecular machines, also called nano factories, have been created that can insert themselves in cancer tumors and deliver targeted meds to the undesired cells, limiting the amount of damage to surrounding healthy cells. So... The nanofactories come from gold nanoparticles. And this is an article from News Atlas. I'll just read a part of this here. Cancer cells thrive thanks to some robust defense mechanisms, so finding ways to get past them is a key area of research. In the past, scientists have sent gold nanoparticles inside tumors by hitchhiking on white blood cells before heating the gold with near-infrared light to kill the cancer from within. Others examine the possibility of administering a, quote, prodrug, unquote, that remained inactive until it detected cancer markers and then began producing drugs from the inside, from inside the tumor. The new work follows, follows a similar function as the latter. The, the technion, that's who they are, they're technion scientists. That, that really does sound like, a, I don't know if they're the good guys or the bad guys in a really bad sci-fi movie. 
from like maybe the late I'm thinking I'm thinking late fifties, early sixties. Check me on. No, no, eighties. I'm uh, never mind. I, I stand corrected. It's 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 an eighties villain operation in a generic sci fi movie. Technion. The Technion scientists loaded molecular machines inside lipid based particles that resemble resemble biological cell membranes creating what they call nanofactories. Once they're activated by sensing the presence of abnormal cells, these particles kick into gear, producing specific therapeutic proteins and pulling the energy and building blocks they need from the tissue around them. And this is a quote from Avi Schroeder, one of the lead researchers at Technion. Watch out, it's Technion. By coding the integrated DNA template, the particles we developed can produce a variety of protein medicines. They are modular, meaning they allow for activation of protein production in accordance with the environmental conditions. Therefore, the artificial cells we've developed at the Technion, Technion, I really love saying that word. I don't know if you guys can tell that. May take an important part in the personalized medicine trend. Adjustment of treatment to the genetic and medical profile for the specific patient. Technion. That's your word of the day, by the way, folks. The, 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 I thought the word of the way, day was going to be bellicose, but no. No, it's, it's Technion. In our next story, it's not the title there. And uh, there we go. Are we... Yes, Turk Wright claims it will lay siege to city of Afrin in next few days. This is one of the big reasons why I call them the freaking Turk Reich. Uh, time will tell, and within the next few days, if Turkey's president, Erdogan, is more bluster than substance... I'm, I'm hoping bluster, by the way. Even as reports are coming out that suggest the Turks are becoming mired in Afrin, Erdogan is claiming that the city itself, which has thus far been largely unaffected by the fighting, will come under siege in the next few days. And this is a story from Fran France 24. Turkey will lay siege to Afrin in northern Syria, President Erdogan said. On Tuesday, a month after Ankara launched an offensive against Kurdish militia in the region. In the coming days, swiftly, we will lay siege to the center of the town of Afrin, Erdogan told Parliament. Well, and remember, he is talking about Operation Olive Branch. Olive Ooh. Branch, Olive Branch, Olive Branch. See, Olive Branch is when you offer a gesture of peace. It's not going to war with someone. Operation Olive Branch is is the well, I won't say the hype because all these military operations tend to have Orwellian titles, but certainly this is right up there in terms of high-ranking Orwellian titles. Operation Olive Branch, where we rape, murder, and pillage your land. You know, in the name of peace. U.S. is building a robot army bigger than the human one. Now relax, relax. They haven't done it yet. I mean, I know, I mean, I know technology goes really, really fast. And, you know, your computer of today, a week from now, is already outmoded. But they haven't, they haven't done it yet. There's just in talks. They're doing some, ex and it, they've done it. It's done. It, it, it's, it's happened. No, no, it hasn't. The U.S. Army is set to expand, but not through manpower. Rather, they're set to expand through robot power. And that's a good thing, right? Oh, yeah, right? Say it with me. That's a good thing. If you're watching live on Facebook, I hope if you are chanting with me, that's a good thing. You write in the comments, that's a good thing. Make sure you also add, and I welcome my robot overlords. So this story is from WND.com. While cyborg soldiers and fully automated weapons have long been fodder for futuristic sci-fi thrillers, ask the folks at Technion about that. <laughs> they are now reality and 
Pentagon, if the Pentagon gets its way, will soon become the norm in the U.S. military. As Defense One reported last Thursday, the Army had just concluded a live fire exercise using a remote controlled ground combat vehicle complete with a fully automated machine gun. The demonstration, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read that, but let's just say, let's just add the, the last mark here. Last week's exercise rep represents just the latest step in the Pentagon's relatively quiet tiptoe into converting the U.S. armed forces to a machine-majority force. Yes! I welcome my robot overlords. I cheer this on. Everybody, cheer it on. You don't you don't want the robot overlords to stumble upon your social media after they take over and see, hey, you didn't say. You didn't say you welcome the robot overlords. You, no, no, no. Document it right now. Document it in this thread right now. Faced with low recruitment and an increased demand for soldiers, the Department of Defense is seeking to solve that problem altogether while also increasing the military's firepower and force in combat. Catalan leaders recoil at Spain's direct rule moves on education. See, direct rule is the very opposite of direct democracy. Spain, under the guise of offering students in Catalonia more choices regarding language, is threatening to take over the Catalan education system. The pushback from the Catalans has been immediately immediate. Now, whether or not Catalan, the Catalonian, the Catalans, Catalonia, should allow its children the choice to learn a different main language, in this case, uh, to learn Castilian over, Catil uh, over Catalan, the moves by Spain to use this as a pretext to take over the education system are transparent. Yeah, I'm not, by the way, for government uh, education in any form. Not even Catalan government education. And a legitimate point can be made about Catalan to say, dude, come on, man, what are you doing? I mean... If it's voluntary and we're going to private schools, that's that's one thing I don't care about. But if these are government-run schools and you're not kidding kids' options, whatever. Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't excuse what Spain is intending to do, which is to completely take over their education system. And you can darn well be sure their government education program will be raising Spaniards not Catalans. So that's the end game there. Philippine president supports China's South Sea man-made island expansions. And uh, just uh, this is from japan-news.com. Apparently, uh, Rodrigo Duarte, du du Duterte, Duterte. I always say Duarte, but it's actually Duterte. But but talk to me in five minutes. I'll say Duarte again. Uh, so he, uh, this past Monday, he was trying to allay fears about China's construction of military bases on man-made islands of the South China Sea. Uh, and then he added this at the very end. It's not intended for us, the contending ideological powers of the world, or the geopolitics has greatly changed. It's really intended against those who the Chinese think would destroy them, and that is America. In other words, hey, Philippines, man, they're not, they're not going to worry about it, man, because you're getting a lot of kickbacks from China right now, so that's probably why he's saying that. But hey, hey America, you screwed. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to move on. And this is your moment of lulls. Russia's Navy SEALs are literally SEALs. Russia is training an elite force of fighters that are sure to slip under the radar of any would-be opponent. These fighters will not be paid in rubles, but in fish. And from all accounts, these fighters, well, they like it that way. Because we're talking about SEALs. You get it? Come on. Not Navy SEALs, but actual SEALs. And Russia is turning them into Marine Commandos. This is from The Sun UK. Russia has revealed they are training real-life SEALs to plant bombs and attack the enemy with their razor-sharp razor -sharp teeth. Oh, my. Uh, I don't know if I should be laughing at this. I should probably, like, 
No, man, this is like, I should call PETA. PETA needs to stop this. I'm sure Russia will listen. I'm sure they'll be like, oh, PETA. Oh, yes, yes, we're very interested. Oh, 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 you want us to stop training killer seals? Oh, sure, sure. They're probably not going to listen. So the Russian Navy will train nine mammals. Now, why do you say mammals there? It's seals. Just say seals. Unless you're playing with me, and it's not just seals. Uh, they're going to look out. A, a multi-mammal military? That's weird. On how to plan explosives under hostile vessels and how to carry out boat repairs. The unlikely comrades are being shown the ropes in the country's Arctic Sea, close to the base of a nuclear submarine beat fleet. That is... That's just incredible. That's that's wonderful. Want to buy a Facebook ad? Well, you're going to need a postcard for that. In a bid to prevent Russia from destroying the world by controlling U.S. elections, Facebook will be implementing a postcard verification system for anyone wanting to buy political ads. The verification is to prevent foreign agents from buying political ads during election seasons. So this is from News Observer, and their headline is Facebook to observe to verify ads with postcards after Russian meddling. Facebook will soon rely on centuries-old technology to try to prevent foreign meddling in U.S. elections. The post office. Baffled and imagine if you're working at a post office and you're referred to as centuries, centuries old technology. Nice. Baffled in 2016 by Russian agents who bought ads to sway the U.S. presidential campaign or just to inject turmoil. Facebook's global politics and government outreach director Katie Harbath told a meeting uh, of the National Association of Secretaries of State in Washington on Saturday that the company would send postcards to potential buyers of political ads to confirm they re reside in the U.S. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our last story. This is also a One Facebook minute. story. And this, by the way, this is your second lulls of the day. You know, I don't remember if I made it a note that the, the SEAL story was your lulls of the day. You can probably figure that out. But here's your second lulls of the day, which you don't get regularly. Facebook spams 2FA account holders. So you go through the trouble of creating a double verified Facebook account for that added extra security because you're a good little self-conscious security-minded person and what happens you're greeted by spammy facebook messages so facebook is claiming the spam is a result of a bug and this is from csonline.com so facebook crossed that line recently blaming the text message spams that everybody was getting on a bug and has apologized one of the most widely cited examples came from software software engineer Gabriel Lewis, so that's too late, though. You hear that sound. So I couldn't even finish that story because this is the way it works. I don't care if I'm in the middle of the story. If that if that little butter bu buzzer beeper thingy goes off, it, that's it. It's over. That was your 20 minutes. That's it. That's all you get. You only get – now you get – well, I guess you don't, you, you really don't only get 20 minutes. Well, you only get 20 minutes of headlines. You get other stuff, but you only get 20 minutes of headlines. And that's, that's all I can give you. And that means that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 20th, 2018, or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video, or go to istate.tv slash H O three O that's zero three zero. You can also find our audio podcast shows on iTunes and also Stitcher by searching for iState. And don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page. And that link is also provided in the description of the, of the YouTubes. And tonight's show is not titled yet because we haven't yet picked the stories. So uh, if you're on Facebook, stay tuned because I'm about ready to address the comments and maybe add a couple other thoughts. 
But if you're on YouTube, you miss that. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at maybe 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I may try another early morning show tomorrow. I'm not sure. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.